For today's lesson, we will be working on page 379 and 380 in your practice book pages. That means you'll need your practice book page and a sharp pencil to be ready for this video. Please pause this video until you have those items ready to go and you're turned to the correct page. Then you can press play. Today we're going to be talking about decimals on a number line. Look carefully at the first number line on your page. What do you see? You can use a number line to compare and order decimals, and that's what we're going to be doing today. Number one says, number one says, label points on the number line above to show nine hundredths, twenty-three hundredths, and seventeen hundredths. So as you can see, they put a little point at fifteen hundredths. Hmm. If I were to look at nine hundredths, I know that nine hundredths would be right below one tenth. So let's first just look at our number line here and observe it just a little bit. It looks like I've split this into tenths. So I've got one tenth, two tenths, three tenths, four tenths, five tenths, six tenths, seven tenths, eight tenths, nine tenths, and then all the way up to one whole. Between my zero and one tenth, I split it down even further into hundredths. So if this right here is my dime, then each one of these little tick marks are my pennies. So if I wanted one hundredth, two hundredths, I could count all the way up three hundredths, four hundredths, five hundredths, six hundredths, seven hundredths, whoops, seven hundredths, eight hundredths, nine hundredths. Now remember, when I get to nine, my next number, this, this zero becomes a one into one tenth. See how I've split that up? Now, because we did all of that counting, I can already find where nine hundredths is. With your pencil, very carefully place a dot on the nine hundredths marker. Now let's look at the other numbers. Twenty-three hundredths. Essentially, it looks like they're just counting by tens, which is what the tenths are, right? So if I've got twenty-three, I've got my two here, I'm going to count over three. So two and I might even want to start at like 20 because I'm going 20 hundredths. So 21, 22, 23. I'm going to put a nice dot there and I'm going to label it 0 and 23 hundredths. Pause this video and see if you can place the point for 17 hundredths on our number line. Then press play to see if you did it correctly. For 17 hundredths, you had a little bit of a tell here because I have 15 hundredths right there. So I'm going to start at my 15 hundredths and I'm going to count 16 hundredths, 17 hundredths. I'm going to place my dot there and I'm going to label it. You should have all three points labeled. If you do not have those points labeled, you need to pause this video and write that down. Remember, everything that I'm writing on my screen, you need to be writing in your practice book, just like you do in class. Number two says, write the numbers in exercise one in order from least to greatest. When I see that phrase least to greatest, I should be thinking, okay, which is the smallest and which is the biggest? If I'm looking at my red dots on the screen, I can see that nine hundredths is my smallest number. So if I'm starting with the least, I'm going to put zero and nine hundredths first on my line. Then the next number that I have on the line, if I'm moving up, is zero and seventeen hundredths. And finally, if I keep moving up my line, my last one is zero and twenty-three hundredths. I've labeled this now from least to greatest, just like they ask. Number three says, how could you use the number line to compare 59 hundredths and 83 hundredths? What do you think? Could the number line help you compare that? If I were to put those on the number line, 
I would put 59 hundredths here and 83 hundredths here. What could you tell me about those two numbers? Write one comparison sentence comparing 59 hundredths and 83 hundredths. Pause the video and do that now. Now that you've written your comparison sentence, I want to look at 4, 5, 6, and 7. We are going to be focusing a lot on ordering decimals from least to greatest, and you can use your number line to help you. Or you can use our cross out system that we've done in the past. So let's look at number 4. Number 4, I'm going to look first at my whole numbers, 0, 0, 0. If it's all the same, I can cross it out. Now let's look at our tenths. I want to label from least to greatest, and it looks like all my tenths are different, which is good. Five, two, and one. I know that one tenth is my smallest, because if I had one dime, that would be the least amount. And then I have two tenths. And finally, I have five tenths. I could also look at that on my number line up above. I'm going to change my color to green, and I'm going to go one tenth, two tenths, and five tenths. I can see that one tenth is my smallest and five tenths is my biggest. Let's look at number five and use our crossing out trick again. Looking at my whole number, I don't have any whole numbers. Be careful. Sometimes it's easy to just cross that out right away, but we always have to check and make sure. Now I'm going to compare my decimals looking just at the tenth. So kind of zero in on the tenth spot. Don't worry about anything else, just at that tenth spot. I've got a one, a zero, and a two. I know that zero is the smallest, so I'm going to start with that number. Zero and eight hundredths. Now I'm done with that one and cross it out. Then I have one and two. One is smaller than two, so I'm going to put zero and thirteen hundredths. And finally, zero and two tenths. Let's graph that on our number line just to make sure. This time I'm going to use yellow. Eight tenths is going to be right next to my, or eight hundredths, is going to be right next to my nine hundredths over here below my one tenth. 13 hundredths is going to be right on the other side. 2 tenths is, oop, right here on my green. What they were trying to do is they were trying to trick you with that 2 tenths because they, they wanted you to, make, to think that 13 is bigger than 2. But we know that 13 is 13 pennies and 2 is 2 dimes. 2 dimes would represent 20 pennies. So we want to make sure to put them in the correct order. You are welcome to do number six and seven now if you'd like. Otherwise, when the whole video is over, you can go back and do any of the questions that we didn't do on the video. Number eight says, label the points on the number line above that show two, um, 250 thousandths, 271 thousandths, and 225 thousandths. Notice now, instead of giving us tenths as our markers, they're instead giving us hundredths. So we've got 20, 21, 22, 23, all the way up to 30. That means between 20 and 21, I'm going to start counting in thousandths now. So if I were going to switch from this one to this one, I would go 0 and 201, 0 and 202. See how I'm counting now? 0 and 203, and I'd keep going. 204, 205, 206, 207, 208, 209. Now I'm moving to 21 or 210 thousandths. 21 tenths or 221 or 210 thousandths. See how they've broken it down even a little bit closer now. So let's look at this. The first one says, 250 thousandths. Well, I know that 250 thousandths is equivalent to 25 tenths, so I'm going to put my dot right here on the line and label it 250 thousandths. My next one is 271 thousandths. 
So first I'm going to look for 27, which I see right here. And then I'm going to go over one more to 271, just like we counted before. So 27, now I'm going 271, and there's my dot. I could keep going 272, 273, 274, 275, and so on and so forth. You're just breaking down that penny into little tiny pieces. My last one is 225 thousandths. Just like last time, I'm going to look at my 22. I'm going to find 22 on my number line. Here it is. And then I'm going to start counting. 220, 221, 222, 223, 224, 225. I think that's what I'm looking for, 225. Yep, good thing I checked. There I am. Zero and 225 thousandths. Now that I've clearly written those on my number line, it's pretty simple for me to order them, making sure that I'm ordering them from greatest to least this time. That means biggest to smallest. They're trying to trick you to make sure you're reading. My biggest number was 0 and 271 thousandths. Then I'm moving along because I'm getting smaller to 0 and 250 thousandths or 25 hundredths. And finally, 0 and 225 thousandths. The last thing that we're going to be doing on this page is number 11. They're asking you to order these decimals once again from greatest to least. I can do that one of two ways. I can do that with my cross out trick or I can do it using my number line. Let's do the cross out trick first and then check our work using the number line. First, I'm gonna cross out my holes. Then I'm gonna look just at my 10th spot. Mm. All of my 10ths are eight, so that doesn't help me order them at all. So I'm gonna cross those out too. Now I'm going to look at my hundredths. I've got a one, a five, and a nine. Hmm. If I'm going greatest to least, I think my nine would be the biggest. So zero, 891 thousandths. Done with that one. Now I'm comparing my one and my five. Don't let that extra five get you all confused. I'm just looking at my hundredth spot. Zero and Oop, five is bigger than one, so five hundredths. And then finally, zero and 815 thousandths. Let's double check and see if that makes sense on our number line. My first one was 891 hundredths. So let's go to 89 and jump one over. Then let's find 85 tenths, or sorry, 85 hundredths. And finally, let's find 815 thousandths. First, I'm finding my 81. I'm going five over. One, two, three, four, five. As teeny tiny as I can be. Awesome. Did I go from greatest to least? Yes, I did. You can choose to fill in the extra blanks. So 10 and 12, 6 and 7 now, or you can do it when the video is over. Our next page is using the greater than and less than to compare our numbers. I will do two examples with you and you will need to finish after the video. Let's look at number 13. First, we're going to look at that whole number just like we did on our last page, zero and zero. Then I'm just going to look at my 10th spot. I know that eight is bigger than three, so 36 hundredths is less than 82 hundredths. Let's look at number 18 as our second example. First, I'm gonna cross out my zero. Then I'm gonna look at my 10th spot. Mm, eight and eight, that doesn't help me. Now I'm gonna look at my hundredth spot, five and five. That still doesn't help me. Now I'm gonna look at my thousandth spot, zero and nothing. Hmm, I know these numbers are equivalent. They're equal. 
You can finish the rest of these examples now, or you can do it when the video is over. Number 21 says, a geologist, who's someone who studies rocks, measured the mass of some rock. Example, ma bleh. Hmm. A, a geologist measured the mass of some rock samples. The table shows the mass in kilograms. The mass is like the weight. List the rocks from greatest mass to least mass. Look at their nice little labels there. Greatest to least. I'll help you find the greatest, but you need to order the rest all the way down. Let's start. Nothing in the hole. Now I'm just looking at my tenth spot. I've got two, zero, one, seven, and eight. Well, the biggest one is eight. I know that's granite. So I'm going to put granite in my first greatest spot. Granite. And just for my own memory, I like to put a little, I like to put the number there. You don't have to if you don't want to, but I like to have it there. Now I'm going to cross that one off. Take a few moments to finish the rest of the mass rocks, ordering it from greatest to least. When you've finished, do number 22 and number three, 23. It says circle the number in each group that does not have the same value as others. That's a review of yesterday's lesson. Don't be confused. Make sure that you are picking out the equivalent fractions. Look carefully at those zeros. They're trying to trick you. Thanks for listening to your video today. Your homework will consist of finishing your practice book pages and then completing your homework and turning it in as an assignment. Have a great day.